Y'all, I'm so excited about this. I just wanted to hop on and share it with you, like, real quick. Because this, this just, like, I love it when God reveals his character and just more of who he is through scripture. It's so awesome to know more of who my father is, right? And what his heart is for me and how faithful he is. So I'm reading in Mark 6. And um, this excited the frick out of me. You can tell. Like, I'm, wow. So, <laughs> Um, Father God, please just use this, uh, your word, just, um, use me as a vessel to teach people and reveal more of your heart to them. Holy Spirit, touch people's hearts and allow them to know you more. Allow a shift to happen in our minds and hearts as we just spend this time, as people watch this video, and, um, as more of you is revealed, God, through me, um, by your word, by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Mark 6. Right, Jesus is getting more and more famous. He's going around teaching, sharing like uh, sharing scripture, uh, performing signs, wonders, miracles, casting out demons, healing people, doing things that should really be normal in modern day Christianity. As followers of Jesus, we have this power. But um, and he's, Jesus is becoming more and more famous for doing these things, and um, his fame gets to the point where King Herod hears about him, and people are saying all these things about Jesus, like, oh, he's. Uh, what is it like in chapter i mean chapter mark chapter 6 verse 14 um his name's becoming known people are saying oh john the baptist raised from the dead other people are saying oh he's elijah others are saying he's a prophet like one of the prophets of old like from hundreds thousands of years ago but when herod hears about it he says oh no john who i beheaded was raised back from the dead because um just for context it, it explains this in chapter 6 uh for context uh King Herod basically had John, not basically, literally had John beheaded because of something that he said to Herod about uh, he shouldn't, who, about who he should not have married. The way this happened was um, the uh, Herodias' daughter, Herodias, I can't remember her exact relationship with Herod. It might have been his wife. Yeah. Um, Herod married his brother Philip's wife. Um, which was not right in the context. Read it for yourself. I just want to get to the, the point that's like getting me so hyped up, right? Anyway, Herod didn't like John. Herodias didn't like John because of that. Um, and what happens is Herodias' daughter comes in and dances for Herod on his birthday. She must have got down and was just, I don't know what it was, but she danced so, Herod was so pleased by her dancing that he was like, yo, Hey, listen, whatever you want, I got you. Like, I don't know what kind of dancing she was doing. But get to the point. Okay, Chaz, focus, focus, focus. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so um, Herodias' Herodias's daughter didn't know what to ask, so she goes to her mother, Herodias, and is like, hey, like, Herod just, the king, just said I could have whatever I want. What should I do? And Herodias, still holding a grudge against John the Baptist, goes... Ask for John the Baptist's head on a platter. And check this out right here. This is the part that had me tripping. So, um, and she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, this is verse 25, and, um, and asked saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. Here it is, chapter, verse 26. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths, and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately, immediately, the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter, gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. And John the Baptist was buried in a tomb. Now check this out. Herod was, was obviously not a believer in or follower of Christ, not a believer in God, right? He was what we could call a wicked king. He did not walk rightly in God's eyes. He did not follow him. He did not give his heart to him. Um, yet, kings keep their word. He was so faithful to his word, what he had spoken in front of people, that he would not break it. He had no idea what. He, he did not expect Herodias' daughter to ask for John the Baptist's head? He didn't want to do that. But because he said, listen, I give you my word. Whatever you ask for, I will do for you. 
when she came back and asked for John the Baptist's head, he was like, I'm a man of my word. I'm a king. Kings keep their word. I will not. I, I have to do this. Check this out. If a wicked king could keep his word and be faithful to what he said, how much more will God be? This is titled one reason why we should read the Bible, because this is God's word. This is full of his promises to us. This is full of his covenants to the, the founders of our faith, so to speak, like Abraham, like Joseph, King David. These promises that he's made throughout history are written in scripture. The more we read scripture, the more we know of God's faithfulness, his promises, what he says, and the more we're able to pray in his will and ask, Father, if you said whatever we ask in your name, you'll give to us according to your will. So if we read scripture, we will know his will and he will give it to us. If a wicked king could do this, could be faithful to his word and keep it a human, how much more will the God of the universe, who has all power over everything, how much more will he be faithful to his word, to us, to his children? This was like, yo, come on, son. This is only one reason to read, study, and know God through scripture because he is a faithful God who keeps his word. This is his word. These are his promises to us. Read your Bible to know God, to know who he is, to know how much he loves us, his promises for us, how faithful he is to us, and how faithful he will be to you in your circumstances right now. All right? That's it. I'm done. Okay? God bless y'all. And the, by the way, the reason why this is called Cash Daily is not because I'm going to be on here sharing a word every single day. It may be that at one point, but the reason it's called Cash Daily, knowing him and sharing him daily is because this is what we are all to be doing as believers. You individually, because imagine if Instagram, YouTube, Facebook shut down. I'm not You're not going to be seeing these videos anymore. This is, Cash Daily is about your personal walk with God, encouraging you to spend time with him daily, to share him daily in some way, to rejoice and to share the gospel and to move in the power of the Holy Spirit, which God has bestowed on us. So, yeah, um, thank you, Lord, for this time, for this word. I pray that it blesses people, that those who you desire to see and know about this, um, to hear this, would receive it, and uh, that you would just, I planted the seed, watered it by posting it, and may you supply the growth. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, later, y'all.